Welcome back everybody to a brand new Unity tutorial series where today we're going to make an endless runner, or should I say flyer, based on the NES classic Bloom Fight. Bloom Fight is a fun, simple game where you fly around collecting balloons while avoiding enemies, hazards, and a giant killer fish. So, pump up your balloons, grab your finest dungarees, and let's crack on. Before we begin, if you want to follow along with this tutorial as is, there is a link in the description where you can download this project with everything prepared, ready to go. If you don't, don't worry, feel free to use your own assets, you're more than welcome. We will go through everything in this project on a need to know as we go basis. So first, let's take a look at our player. The player is set up as follows. We have a ground detector, which we've used many times in previous tutorials to detect whether our feet are firmly on the ground or not. Speaking of feet, we also have a feet collider, which is a simple box collider 2D, just so we can collide with the ground. And the player itself has a capsule collider 2D for its hit detection to take damage and a rigid body 2D, which we're going to use to move the character. We are going to be using physics. I've already attached the player controller script. So let's go ahead and open it up. First, for those that may be unfamiliar with how the ground detector works, let's do a quick review. We want a ball grounded that will trigger true or false depending on whether our ground detector is making contact with anything on the ground layer. That is our layer mask right there. We want to give that detector a radius. So we have a float ground detector radius and it will work as follows in the fixed update. Grounded, the ball, will equal physics 2 dotoverlap circle. And inside we want the ground detector dot position, the ground detector radius and that ground layer we're detecting for. In order to see this in the engine, we've just created a void on draw gizmos, which gives it a color and draws a wire sphere so we can visualize it. With that, we are going to want three floats to begin with, a horizontal force equals three F, which will move us forward or backwards. Then in order to ascend, we want a vertical force that will equal 5F. We also want to clamp our velocity. So we will have a public float max velocity and that will equal 8F. That's gonna come in really handy to avoid the player accumulating far too much force and going way too fast. Then underneath, let's punch in a private vector two. We will call movement. And of course, we want to use the rigid body to apply these forces. Therefore, rigid body 2D, RB2D, and all animations are prepared. So don't worry about doing it yourself. So we also need to call upon the animator, simply called the anim. Then finally, in void awake, not void start, we will make references to the rigid body and the anim. The reason we're using void awake here is so that everything's ready to go the moment the player game object is active and ready to go before the scene starts. That's all we need for now. Let's sort our horizontal movement in fixed update. Underneath, let's punch in the rigid body 2D dot add force inside the brackets. That will be a new vector two. That vector two, of course, will be our vector two of movement dot X multiplied by horizontal force on the X axis. And of course, we don't want any change on the Y. Therefore, it'll be zero. Then we'll close out the brackets there like so. While we're here, we also want to clamp the player's velocity to a maximum velocity. So underneath, let's create an if statement that says if the rigid body 2d dot velocity dot magnitude is greater 
than the max velocity. Therefore, the rigid body 2D dot velocity will equal a vector 2, clamp the magnitude, and the values will be clamped between the player's current rigid body 2D velocity and the value of our maximum velocity. So it will never exceed what the maximum is. So I think it's time we now get our player off the ground. Let's scroll down to our void fly. Inside, let's create an if statement for our input. Let's use the left mouse button. So if input dot get mouse button down zero, we'll do the same again. The rigid body 2D dot add force in the brackets, transform dot up. We want to flap our arms and fly into the air, multiplied by that vertical force by a force mode 2D dot impulse. So it's instantaneous force. Then we can trigger our animations ball. So the anim dot set ball fly is true. Then when we release the left mouse button, if input, dot get mouse button up zero the anim dot set ball fly is false then of course we want to make a reference to the grounded ball in our animator the anim dot set ball grounded and of course is grounded we will take a deeper look at the animator just after we've sorted the script and we'll run through how that works so Let's go to the move function now. Here, we're going to do something a little different. In balloon fights, you can only move forward or backwards so long as you are pressing the input for fly. In order to do that here, let's create an if statement that will say if we are not grounded, therefore we're in the air, and we are pressing that left mouse button to fly, then, our movement dot x will equal whichever input we press on the input dot get axis raw horizontal axis. So the left or right arrow keys, A or D, or whatever you've got assigned in your custom settings for horizontal. So once again, rather than just hold down horizontal, we won't move unless both our horizontal input and the input for fly are pressed. You will see how this feels when we play test, but before we do, underneath the if statement, let's help our player face the direction he's moving by flipping the sprite. So we'll say if movement.x is greater than zero, then the transform.local scale of the player will equal new vector two, one, one on the x and y. Else, if we are moving to the left, and our movement dot x is less than zero. Then we'll flip the sprite to face the left. Therefore, the transform dot local scale will be the new vector two minus one, one. So minus one along the x. So the player will face whichever direction he's moving. Then finally, let's go to the void update and punch in our move and fly functions like so. Let's hit play, head back into Unity. And before we hit play, let's head to the animator of the player and run through it quickly. So here are the parameters we set before, like grounded and fly. In the hierarchy, when we enter the scene, we'll start as standing. Then to transition into fly, we want grounded to be false, fly to be true. Then from an idle flying, so when we're not pressing any inputs, to fly, we of course want fly to be true. And the reverse to revert back to idle flying, then to idle. And of course, eventually, we want the player to fall if we hit an obstacle. Therefore, if the player dead is true, and we'll come to that in a later part, from flying or fly idle, we will then fall and then to reset from our death state back to idle when our character resets on this platform. So go ahead, hit play, and you should now be able to enjoy a nice bit of flying. There we go. Left mouse button 
causes our guy to flap his arms and ascend. Gravity brings us back down and we can move left or right so long as we're holding down left and right input and pressing left mouse button at the same time. Gives us a nice, clean, tight control, just like the original Bloom Fight. Excellent. Let's stop there for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching, guys. We do appreciate you joining us for this new series. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below or over on our socials at Twitter or Instagram. Until then, take care, have fun, and we'll see you soon.